Hi everyone, Eric Reynolds with your Fox 10 News Now update. Mobile County Sheriff deputies say an accused murderer and rapist killed by another prisoner inside Metro Jail. They say Brian Pearson choked, then beat Joaquin Jones to death. Now we are told that it happened during a fight over dice from a board game. We are told in the investigation that it was a dispute over the dice that come in a purchase of a Monopoly game that the inmates are able to buy through the commissary. Uh, they had a dispute over one person not providing the other one with the dice. Jones, who investigators say started the fight, was found in his cell Monday night not breathing. Now, the sheriff's office says that Pearson, who was in jail on a number of charges, will now be charged with manslaughter. Jones was accused of a 2020 murder along with rape and sodomy in another incident. Cleanup efforts ramping up on Dolphin Island following Hurricane Ida. Crews finally able to get down to the west end to get a look at the damage. Now there where they say that not uh, the water, but there is sand. Everything past St. Stephen's Road buried as by as much as four feet of sand. Alabama power crews making the challenging trip to fix the broken power poles. Work is expected to take several weeks. People we talked to still say that they are happy though with how the island held up and say that they will bounce back like they always do. Dolphin Island is probably the most resilient island or place on earth when it comes to hurricanes. We get hit by so many that they can clean this place up and make it look perfect so fast it is ridiculous. Only utility crews and folks who live on the island are allowed past the checkpoint right now with a re-entry pass, but Mayor Jeff Collier says the rest of the island open for business as usual. A team of first responders from Gulf Shores getting ready to head to Hammond, Louisiana this morning to provide some relief. The 10 volunteers know all too well what their counterparts in Hammond are going through after enduring Hurricane Sally here just a year ago and other storms, of course, throughout the year. From heavy equipment to hand tools, they will be prepared to help however they can. And we're going over there to kind of repay some favors that we've been given to us in the past when we've had these things. You know, when we have storms hit here, everybody else opens their arms and wants to come help, and we want to repay it. The most important thing the team will provide is peace of mind by tending to the homes and properties of first responders there. Now, this will allow the Hammond police officers and the firefighters to focus on their job protecting the public during this very trying time. I'm meteorologist Michael White with your Fox 10 storm tracker report. A little offshore rain bright and early this morning. A few spots actually did pick up some rain last night, but most spots on shore are currently rain free, which means that we're not really going to have any major issues for those of you that are going to be commuting to work and getting the kids to school, except for the fact that it is a bit muggy this morning. As far as the bigger picture, things out there are looking pretty quiet. A few scattered clouds are going to be around the remnants of Ida moving off into parts of West Virginia today and then eventually off the northeast coast by the end of the week and down here things are relatively calm, but now we're going to be back in a traditional summer pattern where we are expecting to see scattered storms flaring up uh, randomly at times with heavy rain and lightning as the primary threats. As far as the weather headlines go for this morning, it's a humid start. We are going to end up dealing with hot weather and scattered storms this afternoon and we turn less humid later this week on the Fox 10 future cast shower and storms start popping up in random spots later this afternoon. Heavy rain and lightning will be the main threats, and then after 6 o'clock, we'll start to see those showers and storms begin to fade away. Here's how the next seven days stack up, and you can see we're only going to deal with slim opportunities for rain starting tomorrow through the Labor Day weekend. Highs will be up to about 90, but notice upper 60s back starting Friday morning. We'll have weather updates throughout the day right here on Fox 10 News Now.